Hey foodies, welcome back to Live Tasty. On this episode, we are making the Matilda inspired chocolate cake. Let's get into it. First, we're gonna start by making our chocolate ganache frosting and we're gonna make that first because it takes a while to set in the refrigerator. So in a bowl, go ahead and pour your chocolate chips and your heavy cream. And we're just going to put that in the microwave in 30 second increments until it's fully melted. When you take it out of the microwave, let it sit for about five minutes and then just get a whisk and whisk it all together. It takes a while to actually fully combine together, but just keep going and it will come together. So I don't know about you, but girl, I've been seeing all over Instagram, people have been making the chocolate cake from the Matilda movie. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's such a good idea. I have to make this. So I came up with this recipe um, and it is to die for. But anyways, once your ganache looks like this, cover it with plastic wrap and put it in the refrigerator for about two to three hours. Now let's get started on our dry ingredients. So here I have my cake flour. I'm using unsweetened cocoa powder, chocolate pudding, baking soda, and salt. I love mixing the dry ingredients separately together just because it makes everything so much easier in the rest of the cooking process. Next to a stand mixer or a large bowl with a hand mixer, add your softened butter and your vegetable oil. Traditional scratch cakes call for just butter, no oil, but I find that the combination of both really keeps the cake moist. Um, so go ahead and mix it on high speed until it looks like this. Next, we'll add our granulated sugar and we're going to cream it with the butter and the oil. First, I'm going to scrape down all of the excess like runaway butter um, just to make sure everything is the same consistency. Now I have to say, this is the main part of the process that will make or break your cake. So when you cream it, you really want it to be white and fluffy. If you don't, your batter will break. So this is a close up of how it should look. It's like triple in size, it's the color white and it's very fluffy. So now go ahead and add in your eggs one by one. Don't add the next egg until it's been mixed in with the batter for about two to three minutes. So my mixer looks like it's going slow, but it's just for the video purposes. Um, the camera's hard to focus when it goes fast. But anywho, after adding your eggs, it should look silky smooth like this. And we're going to add our sour cream and vanilla extract. Now that I'm just going to mix in slowly until it's incorporated. And then I'm going to add a third of my dry ingredients to the mixture. Everything is done in thirds. So I'm going to add a third of the hot milk into the mixture once the dry mixture is completely combined. And then after that milk is completely combined, then I will add another third of the dry mixture and continue until my batter looks nice and silky like this. I literally cannot wait to bake this batter up. Like it's so silky and just picture perfect. Like let's go ahead and get it into our cake pans. So here I have three six inch round cake pans that I have greased and floured. By the way, you can also use two eight inch round cake pans. And we're just going to evenly distribute our cake batter into each pan. Then guys, we're just going to bake these up at 325 degrees for 40 minutes. And this is how they should look. Now let's roll into our chocolate ganache frosting. So this has been refrigerated for about two hours. And as you can see, it's a very thick. So what I'm going to do is microwave it in 30 second increments, um, just so that it can soften up a little bit. And then I will be able to mix it. Now it's nice and silky and it's spreadable now. Um, if I didn't microwave it, it would be very, very hard to spread onto my cakes and the cake will actually like break into crumbs. Now we just need to level off our cakes. I'm going to slice mine while it's still in the pan. Um, nothing special, but I'm going to eat my cake top because I just need to taste this. Go ahead and dab on a piece of frosting onto your plate and add your cake on top and then let's get to stacking. So I'm just going to dab on some of the chocolate ganache frosting and I'm going to evenly layer it in between each cake. Then guys, just repeat the process, adding the next cake layer on, making sure everything is nice and even before you add the next dollop of frosting. And just spread that out and you will be ready to add your next cake layer on. I absolutely love chocolate ganache frosting for this recipe because it honestly tastes like fudge, like a fudgy chocolate cake. I love a rich, decadent frosting. Um, I'm not a huge fan of like buttercream frostings. Like I love my buttercream frosting, um, but if I order a cake from somewhere, I nine times out of 10, I'm not gonna order buttercream. 
um so this one like i said is nice and fudgy it can even be put on like brownies like guys this frosting is so simple like it comes together so fast and it's just out of this world delicious and now once our cakes are stacked we are going to do a light crumb coat um yes i believe in crumb coats because oftentimes when you try to skip the crumb coat and just go straight into frosting you will notice that you have like cake crumb pieces in your design and it looks terrible so now that my crumb coat is done i'm going to add on my final layer of frosting starting at the top i'm just going to even that out on top and then i'm going to go around the sides making sure all of the gaps are filled in and then i'm just going to take a regular house spoon for my design and i'm just going to make these little simple swirls all over the cake i think that this is probably one of the most simple cake designs to do but it doesn't matter like how you do it it always comes out beautiful so this is one of my go-to's so just go ahead and take the spoon and swirl it all over the cake any way you like if i remember correctly this is um the design that they used on the chocolate cake in the matilda movie as well so this is what our final cake looks like guys and let's go ahead and cut into this luscious cake i do recommend refrigerating it for at least two hours before cutting um, just so that the cake doesn't fall apart but look how beautiful this is guys i don't know about you but if i was little brucey i definitely would have taken the tension whatever miss trenchable wanted to give me for a slice of that chocolate cake this recipe is a must try please let me know in the comments if you try it out like and subscribe i will see you in the next video